Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today to talk about Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. I know, it's non-fiction <laughs> and uh, it's really not the kind of thing that I normally read or talk about on this channel. That being said, if you know me like personally, it's entirely unsurprising that I read this book because I'm a big, big fan of Trevor Noah and I have been a big fan of his since, I'm gonna sound like such a hipster, but since before he was famous. <laughs> that, yeah, that's obviously not true. But um, he, I first saw him because I watch a lot, I'm on Angle Files. So I watch a lot of British panel shows and British comedy and stuff like that. And I first saw him on a British panel show where he kind of just was a British comedian or was a, a comedian from South Africa who was being featured on British television. And he mentioned his upbringing and he, he spoke some Tassa, which I can't, is even the name of the language has a click in it, so I can't say it right. But he spoke some of that and was utterly charming and so well-spoken. And then when he joined The Daily Show as like one of the cast, I was like, oh, it's Trevor Noah. And then he became the host of The Daily Show. Now everybody knows who Trevor Noah is. So obviously <laughs> I wasn't like his friend in high school. I obviously only came to know who he was when he was at least somewhat famous because he was on British television. All that to say, I've been a fan of his for a while. And when I heard he was publishing this book, I pre-ordered it and I got it immediately. And I've had the physical book and the audiobook for a long time <laughs> because the book came out in like 2017, I want to say? 2016 maybe? 2016. This is the first edition. Anyway, all of that to say, this is a memoir of his childhood and growing up during apartheid in South Africa. And some of it I was like a little bit familiar with because he talks a lot about his background, his childhood, his upbringing in his stand-up comedy, and he weaves it in when he's discussing politics and whatever. That's his experience. So it's obviously relevant to the way he perceives what's going on presently in America or all this kind of thing. He's always come across as very well-spoken, very uh, even keeled, I want to say. That's one of the things I like about his comedy and his personality on The Daily Show. He's not one of those like in-your-face type people that's like really aggressive all the time and really... You know what I mean? Like he's not, he just, he comes across very calm and collected and, and well-spoken and like he's put a lot of thought into what he's saying. And so I imagined that his book would also reflect that and it does. And the audiobook is read by Trevor. So if you like audiobooks, I recommend the audiobook because for one, he reads, it's a memoir. So he's telling his own story. So who better the, to tell his own story than himself? But also there's so many instances where people are speaking like a various uh, African languages, which I would have no idea how they're supposed to sound or how to read them. And he, <laughs> he speaks them all so fluently. So it just, I mean, it's not like you couldn't read this book, not knowing those languages and like you couldn't read this book. It's not like it's written in those languages, but hearing him speak those languages, I very much enjoyed and I think added to the experience. And it's not something that I'd be able to understand or experience reading it myself because I don't know. Um, he doesn't just also, he doesn't just speak African languages. He speaks German, he speaks Spanish, he speaks a bunch of different languages. So um, he's um not just well-spoken, but he's internationally well-spoken. This book was too short. That's my only complaint about it. But that said, brevity is its own art. And that's one of the top things I praise uh, Neil Gaiman for is his brevity. And so Trevor Noah, this isn't filled with like a bunch of fluff and unnecessary filler. It's really to the point and he tells the stories that he wants to tell and they all kind of connect in some of it. It's not entirely chronological. It's largely chronological from young, very young childhood to young adulthood, but it is jump around a bit because he kind of organizes things by theme or where they're appropriate or brings in anecdotes that later become relevant or he, he organizes it in a way that makes sense according to theme as well as his age. And this is just such a good book. I... <laughs> I expected to like it. I ex I thought it would be good because I really like Trevor Noah. Knowing what I know about his life, I figured it'd be interesting to hear about how he grew up, knowing that being half black, if you don't know, apartheid, it was illegal for, for black people and white people to marry and to have children or anything like that. And his mother is black and his father is white. So his existence, his very existence is illegal. That's why it's called Born a Crime. So I knew that about him and I knew that about his sort of origins, so to speak, because I'd heard him, I don't want make that joke, but he had referred to himself as being born, as having been born a crime before. So when I heard that was what he named his book, I was like, oh, that makes sense. That's really appropriate. But there was just so much more to his, I mean, I imagined a story about somebody living in impoverished circumstances and having to hide from the law. And that's all I really anticipated going into this. But there's just so much to what South Africa was like. And I don't know anything about it. This is pretty much my first experience learning about it, which I mean, brief aside, America's school 
education system is is so inadequate because I don't know anything about South Africa because it wasn't taught in school. It wasn't even taught in university. I'm ashamed that I don't know about it, but also it's not my fault. <laughs> and I think more people should know about it, be taught about it. And the things that I was taught in school, I just, I, that's a whole other conversation for another day. Basically, there's just so much to his experience that is just so informative and educational because I know nothing about South Africa. I know apartheid was a thing that existed, <laughs> but that's it. <laughs> I didn't really even know when it started, how it started, when exactly it ended how it ended, I just kind of vaguely am aware that apartheid is a thing and, and kind of vaguely what apartheid was about. But that's it. And now, I wouldn't say I'm an expert on it, but so much of this was so illuminating. And there's a, port, uh, a part in the book where, let me put this down, um, he talks about a friend of his whose name was Hitler. And he's a black guy in South Africa. His name was Hitler. And he is going to be telling a story. He's about to tell a story that has Hitler in it. But it's important to note that his name is Hitler. So he takes a moment before he tells the anecdote to discuss one, yeah, his name is Hitler. And two, that's not at all uncommon in a South Africa. That there's a lot of guys named Hitler. And why that is fine, <laughs> or it's actually a great, it's really indicative of your Western view of things that you would, you would gasp at that. And if you think of it from their perspective, it isn't actually strange that that's occurred. And they are not Nazis. <laughs> They're, and then they can't be white supremacists, they're black. So he talks about how the the way that people would be naming their children, how they would choose their names and how the government's role in how people would choose their names and how they would often revere and want to choose from names that were strong men from history. And as far as they're concerned, as far as their awareness, Hitler is just another strong man from history. They don't know. I mean, they kind of know, but not really. Not in, They're not taught about the Holocaust in schools, just like we're not really taught about apartheid in schools. So like they might kind of vaguely know that Hitler did some bad stuff, but Hitler was a big powerful dude that scared the shit out of people. And so like that's a strong name. And so it's a good strong name to give your kid. And that's really all there's to it. They're not pro-Hitler. They're not pro-Nazi. They're just choosing a name the way that you might choose, you know, a name like Thor. It's just, oh, it's just a strong name. So his name is Hitler. And a lot of people's name is Hitler. But then this did come up and I mean, this became relevant because they don't think of the name as being anything un out of the ordinary or unusual. And they, he and Hitler were DJing at a bar mitzvah. <laughs> and you can see where this ended up going. Stuff like that, just the fact that, yeah, I, of course, hear someone's name is Hitler and I'm just like, oh my God, that's awful. But that's because I'm taught in school about extremely Western events, extremely Western atrocities. And of course the Holocaust is awful. But again, Trevor Noah makes the point of, okay, but think about how many black people were killed in Africa when Europeans came and went all the times that they came and went. And is that, I mean, is the Holocaust worse than that? I mean, is it debatable? <laughs> but we don't talk about those atrocities the way that we talk about the Holocaust. Like it's the end all and be all of historical atrocities. Of course the Holocaust is an atrocity, but there are other atrocities out there. And the Holocaust isn't regarded or it hasn't affected people in other parts of the world in, in their education, in their memory, in their personal experience. So why should they think the Holocaust is worse than the atrocities that they experienced, you know? And it just, that perspective shift, I just, yeah. And it, it, I always bring up the fact that I studied anthropology, but it did remind me of studying anthropology because part of anthropology is taking the familiar and making it other and taking the other and making it familiar. So taking myself out of my own experience and trying to see the world through the eyes of somebody who was educated differently, experienced life differently, experienced a different part of the world where the things that I just take for granted as being relevant, as being important, as being facts that you just know, the way you know that gravity works and turning them on their head where you're like, yeah, why would they know? Why would they care? That's, it's really um, arrogant to think that people in Africa would think that Hitler is the worst thing that happened to the world. Why should they? So anyway, um, this book isn't just about a guy named Hitler. <laughs> There's a lot of, I mean, his, the stories he tells about his childhood, they'll have you laughing. They will have you crying. They will have you shocked and amazed. They'll have you, it'll warm your heart. His, oh, I came away from this. I knew his mother was, you know, quite a bold woman and quite a strong woman. And I mean, she raised 
half white kid during apartheid. Like just knowing that about a person is enough to tell you that that person's probably pretty incredible. But the stories that Trevor tells about his mother, it, she's an amazing woman. He really owes a lot of who he is and his success in life to her. And I don't think, I mean, he'd be the first to say that that's true. So it was, it was incredible. I, I legitimately, I was laughing and I was crying and it's an emotional roller coaster that's well worth it. Trevor reads it so well because he's, it's, it feels like he's just like having a conversation with you. He's just chatting with you about his life. And it's kind of amazing that somebody, it, how far he's come, how high he's risen, but also that he's never really forgotten his roots. And he's, that he doesn't tell a story where he's going, you should pity me and you should be impressed and you should be amazed at how I have pulled myself up out of the misery. He doesn't tell it like that. He tells it like this, all these experiences shaped him. And I don't think, well, I wouldn't say he wouldn't change any of it because a lot of it is very tragic. <laughs> and I'm sure he would have preferred not to grow up that way. But it's not a pity party, I guess is what I'm saying. He experienced things that, that rival pretty much any sob story anybody could ever offer you. His, his childhood was it's not an easy one, but he's not, the book isn't trying to like make you feel guilty or, or make you, again, pity him or, or anything like that. It doesn't feel like that at all. It, it feels very honest and very raw and very, I don't, it's just really good. He tells it well. He tells it briefly. He tells it anecdotally. He tells it in a way that has you laughing and crying and, and it's just so good. It's so freaking good. I was so sad that it was over so quickly because it was so, so amazing. <laughs> All right. I guess that's all I have to say about it. Um, if you have any interest at all in reading a book about an incredible person who's lived an incredible life, then then read Born a Crime. And again, I'm sure reading it as a physical book would be fine. <laughs> I'm sure it would be enjoyable and great, but it's just so much. I think it just adds so much to it that he's reading it because they're his memories. Because even if you got a narrator that could speak all those African languages and could read it just as accurately as he does, they're his memories. So it just adds something so much more personal to it when you know that the person who's reading it to you right now, he lived it. <laughs> He's, it's not a story. That's his life. So I highly, highly recommend the audiobook because it feels like a privilege to hear him tell his own story and to share it with us. Let me know in the comments down below if you are a big fan of Trevor Noah like I am. Even if you're not a big fan of his comedy, um, I think the book is, is still worth picking up because it I means stand-up comedy is something so different from an, an honest examination of one's own life. So if his, this isn't a, a humor book, this isn't filled with his stand-up and jokes. Obviously there's some humor in it because some of the circumstances of his upbringing are just humorous in and of themselves in a dark way. So there's naturally, just as life naturally has comedy built into it, but it's not, it's not a comedian's book. It's just a memoir. So pick it up is what I'm saying. I just, I can't imagine anyone not getting something out of this book. Whatever your feelings are about his politics or his comedy or anything like that, I highly recommend it. If for nothing else, it will just open your eyes to a completely different perspective and make you question all the things that you just accepted and took for granted as, as positions, as knowledge, as facts. <laughs> not that those facts aren't true, but just their, their importance, their significance, or where they are, they're bearing on, uh, on your worldview. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let me know in the comments down below your feelings about Trevor Noah, about memoirs in general, about apartheid. If you want to tackle that in the comments, I guess go ahead. Let me know anything and everything. I post videos on Saturdays, sometimes Wednesdays. So like and subscribe and I'll see you when I see you.